Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Shipping containers since their inception have been used for various applications and Shipping Container Manufacturer, Container World Operations Director, Darren Singh, believes there is a bright future ahead for the industry. Anine Killian tells us more. Singh says that market demand for alternative uses for containers started in the early 70s, noting that Container World initially worked with just steel containers. The company decided it could add value to the containers by transforming them into offices, clinics, and apartments. He says the company started to put electronics in the container, as well as air conditioning and insulation for heat control. He adds that even though the current market is depressed owing to lack of demand and the weakened global economy, he feels the market demand will increase in 2016. I don't think that the container industry is going to come to a close end very quickly. I think there's huge improvements, there's huge scope for the markets, not just in South Africa, but we are looking more into Africa as a new playing ground. And I think the industry is going to be by far one of the biggest in, in years to come. And as one can see from the local market, there are a lot more competitors rising, and that's purely due to the demand of uh, containers in South Africa. Singh points out that the company has a diversified range of containers, ranging from basic storage containers to banks, butcheries and even clinics. We also have containers that people use as office containers or ablution containers as I've shown you. Uh, there's just a huge range. We've done campsites as well, which are we call remote campsite solution, complete turnkey operations, where we supply you from ground zero to completion where people can stay in them. The largest application and project we've done is, uh, was for Barrick Gold in Lumwana uh, some two years ago, where we provided a campsite for just over 500 people. The campsite is still currently active and working, and it was one of our pride and joys. Uh, and then from there, we had a lot of spin-offs with other companies who've seen the product, seen the range that we were able to offer. And from there, we've actually got more, uh, more orders in, in Chad, in Gabon, in Ghana. And uh, yeah, we, we were very, very proud of that. We are tendering on projects in uh, Palma uh, with an LNG gas plant that's coming up there. We are hopeful that we would get a part of the action. Uh, a lot depends on pricing, as everybody would understand. And uh, yeah, I think that th that right now is where we are heading. Uh, we also do have a facility and an operation in Angola with a joint partnership uh, with ESCO and Container World. The group is called Habitat Limitada. And that there is uh, a new venture to us. We are really uh, looking forward to pushing that in 2016, not just for the uh, onshore industry, but also for the oil and gas industry, because that's where your biggest oil and gas market is. Other news making headlines this week. A Gauteng shopping center boasts the largest rooftop PV installation in Africa, and fixed wireless deployment is growing apace, especially in Europe. Development company Hydroprop's regional shopping center Clearwater Mall in Johannesburg, Gauteng, has tripled the generation output of its solar photovoltaic plant by adding an additional 1,000 kWp to the system. Second phase, we added one megawatt onto the roof. Um, first phase that was commissioned mid-November last year was a 500 kilowatt project. So the total project takes the total project size up to 1.5 megawatt or 1,500 kilowatt of solar project. South African antenna manufacturer Pointing derives about 50% of its revenue from consumer and enterprise fixed wireless antenna product sales in Europe, including Norway, Finland, Denmark and Sweden. In Europe we have found that the adoption of LTE technology with the mobile operators has taken off quite aggressively and that has had a good effect on our business. For us that's quite significant, not only because um, the European market forms half, if not most of our business, but locally we see Europe as a leading indicator. So what's happening in Europe will probably happen here five years later. So we're expecting quite a boom in LTE and the adoption of fixed wireless and hence our products in the South African and Sub-Saharan market. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.